On today's Winning Cures Everything, we knock out the first 10 games of bowl season. So let's get to it. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. All right, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at GaryWCE. I am on Twitter at Winning Cures. Uh, your boy has got COVID. That's right. Still doing the show. I'm okay, I think. But uh had to stay home from the office today and probably tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that, right? So... I think, uh, think the wife and kids may be going down to my in-laws for the weekend if I am not uh, testing negative by then. But I've had to stay away from them. I've been quarantined up, all that kind of mess. It, just exactly what you would want right before uh, the Christmas holidays, of course. Uh, it is Thursday, December 14th. Hopefully everybody's having a good day thus far. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do the show quickly, right? Uh, go on and check out the BetUS College Football Show. I do... Full deep dives with Parker Fleming and uh, and Kyle Hunter over there. Uh, but we have already gone over these games over there, so I would highly recommend that you go and check those out for my official plays and for Parker's and Kyle's over there. Uh, so, yes, there's a link in the description for that as well. Um, what else? Oh, if you want to support the show, obviously there's a membership thing that you can do on YouTube right here. Or you can go over to buymeacoffee.com slash winningcures. And I've already got the uh, projected scores put up over there if you want to support those. So I would certainly appreciate that. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, if you want to follow my plays, what I'm actually betting, uh, you can do that on Telegram, uh, t.me slash GaryWCE, or just get on the Telegram app and, uh, and search for GaryWCE. That would be uh, the easiest way to do that. All right, with that said, it's about two minutes and 20 seconds in. Let's go on and dive in. Game number one here, the Myrtle Beach Bowl. That's right. Uh, we got Ohio against Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern is a three-and-a-half-point favorite currently with a total of 48-and-a-half. This one's Saturday, December 16th at 10 a.m. Central on ESPN. And let's go on and pull up what the numbers look like. Now, remember, these stats don't include all of the opt-outs. Uh, I do talk about all of the opt-outs and whatnot on the BetUS show, so... Uh, make sure that you are over there, uh, the U.S. College Football Show. Again, link in the description for that. Uh, looking at this, so this is the full season numbers. You scroll through and, and you get an idea that Ohio was uh, significantly better than Georgia Southern this year. Now, Georgia Southern just completely tailed off at the end of the year. These are the last four, or excuse me, last six weeks numbers. And, yeah, uh, Ohio... Just way better. Now, the offense wasn't exactly anything to write home about. Um, and there, Ohio's got two running backs out, and they've got the quarterback out, and just blah, 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 right? It's just a mess. The difference is, one, Georgia Southern can't stop anything. They're number 128 in defensive success rate. And on the other side, Ohio's defense, who does not have a bunch of opt-outs, they're number four in defensive success rate allowed. So they're... Like, this defense is what's kept them in games. Number 12 in PPA per pass allowed. Number 21 in PPA per rush. Uh, Georgia Southern throws the ball over 60% of the time. Uh, this this line, when it opened, was Ohio minus 2.5. Uh, now it's out to Georgia Southern minus 3.5 because of all the opt-outs. I think I still would go with Ohio here. Like, I, there's nothing that I've seen from Georgia Southern that would make me think that they are going to be, you know, really good. Now, the issue is Georgia Southern is pretty explosive. Um, number 38 in net explosiveness, and Ohio is number 128. If Georgia Southern gets out on them, if they hit a couple of big plays early, I don't know that Ohio has the offensive acumen to be able to get back into the game. So, with that said... I still like Ohio's defense. I think this thing is going to be pretty tight. Georgia Southern has not played well. Uh, Georgia Southern is known for turning the ball over. And Ohio, 
uh, pretty good at forcing turnovers, if I remember correctly. Yeah, number 48 in takeaways per game. Uh, Georgia Southern's number 131. Now, you can't bank on turnovers, but I do think this thing, this game's going to be pretty tight. Uh, so that hook, I'm going to take Ohio uh, plus the three and a half on that one. All right, next up, the New Orleans Bowl. Of course, Saturday, December 16th. That's uh, This one's at 1.15 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. It is, of course, I can't even read my writing. Oh, Louisiana against Jacksonville State. That's right. Jacksonville State is a three, no, excuse me, uh, over at a couple of different books, a two-and-a-half point favorite with a total of 59. Uh, found that kind of kind of difficult to believe, but regardless, we'll look at the numbers here. For the full season, my numbers would have Jacksonville State favored by one-and-a-half. Now, again, just full season numbers, uh, nothing too crazy, right? But when you start looking at the most recent trends, now obviously Chandler Fields is back uh, for Louisiana, Looking at the last four weeks, or excuse me, last six weeks, I've got to get back used to that. Uh, because when it comes to bowl season, I take the last six weeks, not the last four. All right. So the last six weeks, I've got Jacksonville State favored by almost a touchdown here. Uh, my power rating has it closer to two and a half. I found that a little interesting. So, number 35, <clears throat> PBA margin for Jacksonville State. Number 81 for Louisiana. Uh, Jacksonville State's offense, not great, number 77 in offensive PPA per drive, uh, but you look at what they're best at, number 20 PPA per rush, uh, yeah, Louisiana number 82 in PPA per rush allowed. Uh, so there is a mismatch here that I believe Jacksonville State's going to be able to take advantage of. Uh, on the other side, Louisiana, uh, they've been throwing the ball a lot better over the past six weeks. Number 28 in PPA per pass against Jacksonville State's defense, number 64. There are multiple times this year that we have seen Jacksonville State safeties just letting guys run wide open, just wide open. Uh, but I don't think that Louisiana is good enough throwing the ball to be able to take full advantage of that. Uh, I think Jacksonville State's going to hold on to the ball for a while. Uh, you start looking at these like net points per drive, uh, Jacksonville State's number 19, Louisiana number 83. Uh, and the crazy thing is the strength of schedule between Conference USA and the Sun Belt, at least the division that Louisiana is in, it's not that different. Right? Number 123, strength of schedule for Louisiana. Number 127 for Jacksonville State. And we saw Jacksonville State uh, look pretty good against an SEC team in South Carolina towards the end of the year, so it's not like they don't know what they're doing. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with Jacksonville State here minus the 2.5. I think this team is... Uh, just a lot better than Louisiana, and they're going to be more fired up for this bowl game because it is their first bowl game uh, in history because this is their first year in the FBS. So uh, cheers to the Gamecocks and Rich Rod. I'm going to take them minus two and a half. And we continue on with the Cure Bowl. Miami of Ohio against App State. This one is at 2.30 uh, Central Time on ABC. Let's get our numbers pulled up. All right, full season, I've got Miami of Ohio favored by .45 points. Uh, let's forget that. Let's just look at the last six weeks. All right, last six weeks, I've got Miami of Ohio by two and a half points. Now, their quarterback, Avion Smith, has decided to transfer. And I get that, right? I mean, he's Brett Gabbert's coming back for another year. Avion Smith wants to be a starting quarterback somewhere. I don't know where he's going to go, uh, but who knows, right? So the line move up to App State minus 6.5 uh, had a lot to do with that quarterback opting out. And I don't think Avion Smith is worth 6.5 uh, points. Like, that's you look at this, and they run the ball 67.66% of the time. So if the quarterback is, uh, and I forget who, oh, uh, uh, nope, nope, I don't even remember who the quarterback's going to be. Regardless, if he can hand off the ball, I think they'll be fine because that's what they've done, right? They're number 16 in rushing explosiveness. They run the ball over 67% of the time. I mean, that is crazy. So 
if they're running the ball all the time, does the quarterback really make that big of a difference? And even when they did throw it, they were number 124 in passing success rate. So they, they were not good. So uh, the way that they won games is with their defense. And you see this. I mean, App State, really good at throwing the ball. Well, Miami is really good at stopping the pass. Number 26 in PPA per pass allowed. Uh, App State is number 18 PPA per pass on offense. I, I think that Miami is good enough to be able to slow down App State's offense. I was hoping this thing would get to seven. Uh, App State's favored by six and a half, by the way. It's a total of 44 and a half. Um, I, I believe that Miami is going to be able to muck this thing up, and they're going to keep it within six and a half points. So, uh, go on and give me Miami of Ohio plus the six and a half here. Chuck Martin has covered in four straight bowl games, uh, or maybe more. I think it's I think Miami of Ohio has covered in five straight bowls. So, something to pay attention to on that one. Uh, moving on, the New Mexico Bowl. New Mexico State against Fresno State. Uh, Fresno State is a three and a half point underdog with a total of fifty one. Uh, this one's at four forty five p.m. Central Time on ESPN. And let's go on and do it. Let's pull up the numbers. Full season numbers would have Fresno favored by point one five points. Okay. Now don't forget Jeff Tedford is out for this game. He is uh, uh, he's dealing with some health issues. So he decided he is going to sit this one out. Um, and then we'll see what happens after that. Tim Skipper is going to be the interim coach. Uh, Diego Pavia, the quarterback for New Mexico State, he is going to play. So that's always good. Um, I have not been able to figure out what my model likes about Fresno. Like, there's there's nothing that I can figure out about this. Uh, if you look, that is the full season numbers. These are the last six weeks numbers. Fresno has looked absolutely atrocious over the past three weeks of the season. They got beat by New Mexico. They got beat by San Jose State, and I'm talking drubbed by San Jose State. Uh, they they just, ever since they beat Boise, this team has not been the same. And you start looking at these numbers, number 52 PPA margin to number 110 uh, in favor of New Mexico State. I can't figure out what my formula likes about Fresno. Like, that just did, none of it makes sense to me. Points per play margin, net points per drive. Uh, maybe it's the fact that Fresno runs more plays. Like, they run 13 more plays. None of it makes sense. So the model really likes Fresno. Uh, but with all the stuff that's going on, the altitude in Albuquerque, all that kind of stuff, that all points, at least for me, to New Mexico State. Uh, this is a team that is highly motivated to win this game. Uh, Jerry Kill and his bunch, they don't know when to stop playing. They go out and they just fight every single game. And I love it. And I think they're going to do the same thing here. I don't think that Fresno wants to be in this game. I don't think they care about this game. Uh, so I am going to take... New Mexico State, minus the three and a half. Give me the Aggies on that one. Next up, we're writing our times down. The L.A. Bowl. That's right. This one's, uh, of course, Saturday, December 16th. 6.30 p.m. Central Time on ABC. UCLA is taking on Boise State. UCLA currently, uh, at a couple of different books, a four and a half point favorite. Total of 49 on this. And, huh. Um, let's look at the numbers. Uh, Latu, the defensive end, uh, or edge rusher, whatever you want to call it, he is opting out for this game. So that's something to pay attention to. Uh, this is the full season numbers. Full season numbers have UCLA favored by about four points. Uh, the power rating has UCLA by over seven, right? It's seven and a half, somewhere around there. Uh, Let's let's skip that, and let's go to the last six weeks, and it would have Boise favored by 7.41. Taylor Green is opting out for this game. Uh, he has already transferred to Arkansas. 
So that's something to pay attention to, obviously. Uh, the Taylor Green is the quarterback for Boise State. Uh, Boise doesn't have a ton of opt-outs. They got some. UCLA has got some as well. Uh, there's some coaches that have left, uh, notably uh, Danton Lynn, the defensive coordinator. He has gone to USC. And in this situation, I think that's a a fairly big deal, although I do think that UCLA is still going to be able to stop and run. Uh, UCLA's strength on defense is, I mean, they're number five in PPA per rush allowed, and Boise is number 21 in PPA per rush on offense. Boise runs the ball. Like, they're running it over 60% of the time, number 18 uh, rushing success rate, and UCLA is number 42 in rushing success allowed. This is... How about this? I don't think that either one of these teams should be favored by more than three points in this game. I think it's just going to be a tight ball game. When you look at the five factors plus talent here, uh, you've got Boise number 29 and UCLA number 43. UCLA just has not seemed motivated in some of these games. So I uh, am going to have to ride with Boise plus the uh, plus the four and a half on this. I just it it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for the line to like to move that much in favor of UCLA just because of that quarterback going out. I, from all I've heard, this uh, this third string quarterback for Boise that they were trying to redshirt, uh, they really like that guy. So we'll see if he can hand the ball off to uh, Genty, then he should be fine. Just just my guess. All right, let me tell you right quick. There's playoff games coming up. There's all sorts of concerts that are good. Tom Segura is on tour. Uh, Burt Kreischer is on tour. All these tickets, right, are going to be really expensive. Tyler Childers, Taylor Swift, whatever. Concerts, ball games, uh, theater stuff, etc. Everything is pretty expensive. And if you want to save some money on buying these tickets, you need to go to Ticket Smarter. And I just did this for Christmas. Just a heads up. Um... Go to TicketSmarter.com and use the promo code WCE10 to get $10 off an order of $100 or more, or use the promo code WCE20 to get $20 off an order of $300 or more. And if you're going to one of these big bowl games, it's going to be at least $300 for two tickets, so why not save a little bit of money? And this is not a one-time thing. You can do this as many times as you want to. Go to TicketSmarter. You see it on the screen there. WCE20 for $20 off $300 or more. Or WCE10 for $10 off $100 or more. Uh, look, do what you need to do on them on them tickets. That's a, a pretty awesome Christmas present. Honestly, experiences to me are better than physical goods. So, make sure and go to Ticket Smarter. Think smarter. Ticket Smarter. Uh, if you haven't already liked the video, subscribe to the channel. All that good stuff. I appreciate you guys for being here. Sorry, this one's a little... Eh, uh, you know, with me having COVID, it's, uh, it sucks. I'll tell you, it really sucks. Uh, but it is what it is. You know, we are going to survive it. Uh, plenty of fluids, plenty of fluids. Carrying on the Independence Bowl. Cal against Texas Tech. This one's in Shreveport, 8.15 p.m. on Saturday. 8.15 p.m. Central Time. And we'll go to pull it up. Right now, uh, Texas Tech is a two-and-a-half point favorite at several different books. Total of, uh, excuse me, total of 58 on this one. And let's see. That, that two-and-a-half is exactly what it was when it opened. So it's just kind of sitting here. Uh, Baron Morton is supposed to be 100%. That's the quarterback for uh, Texas Tech. And... You know, I uh, I look at this. I think uh, neither one of these defenses is going to be able to really slow down the other the other team. Cal has a pretty big advantage when it comes to running the ball. Uh, but Cal's offensive coordinator, Jake Spavital, he's out. So it is what it is. These I do these, and it's it's stat projections, right? So it doesn't include all of the other crap. Uh, let's pull up 
the last six weeks numbers, and they would have Texas Tech favored by about half a point. Those numbers got kind of skewed, uh, mainly because of the Texas game at the end of the season. I mean, Texas just walloped these dudes. It was like fifty-seven to seven or something. I mean, it was it was ridiculous on Black Friday. Um, but here's the deal: like Cal can still run the ball with Jay Knott. Uh, Mendoza, the quarterback, he can throw the ball a little bit. And throwing the ball happens to be Texas Tech's strength on defense. They are pretty good at stopping the pass, but they are not good at stopping the run. So if Jay Knott decides to go off, he can do that. Kind of, I'm, I'm a little curious about Taj Brooks. Um, is he going to be able to, to you know, do what he does against this Cal defense? who is number 17 in PPA per rush over the last six weeks. Eh, I'm a little curious, uh, especially, you know, rushing success rate is number 75, while Texas Tech is number 32. I I think, and here's a, a big part of this, I wonder what this offense is going to look like without Spavital. I think it'll be pretty similar. They're probably going to run the ball a lot for Cal. Uh, Texas Tech... I imagine that they throw the ball more than they have been. They might be down a few wide receivers. Um, but I think they're going to run the ball too, and I think they'll be fine doing that. I think Shreveport is going to be Lubbock East. I said that on the Bet U.S. College Football Show. I am going to take Texas Tech minus the 2.5. Joey McGuire thrives on bowl games. He is highly motivated to win these things. He uses them as advertisements for his program. Uh, Zach Kitley going up against this Cal defense could be a lot of fun. I, th- I think this one's going to be a fun ball game, but I'm going to take Texas Tech to win. I think they're going to have a huge crowd in Shreveport. Shreveport, underrated bowl game. I've been there multiple times for uh, for bowl games. It's a blast. An absolute blast down there. So I, uh, I love Shreveport. Love Shreveport. All right. The famous Toastery Bowl. It's really the Bahamas Bowl, but uh, this year it's in Charlotte because they're renovating the stadium in the Bahamas. So could you imagine being Old Dominion in Western Kentucky and having to go to Charlotte instead of the Bahamas? Just kind of sucks for those guys. Old Dominion, a two-and-a-half point favorite, total of 55 on this. This one's on Monday, December 18th at 1.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. And let's look at the full season numbers. It would have Western Kentucky favored by 6.62 points. Uh, but let's look at the last six weeks, and it would have Western Kentucky by 6.63 points. Not a lot of change uh, over the last six weeks of the season compared to the first six weeks. Um, The power rating would have Western Kentucky by 7, and yet Old Dominion is favored in the game. And the reason they're favored in the game is we don't know if Malachi Corley is going to play, and we don't know if... Or, well, we do know that Western Kentucky's got like three offensive linemen out for this game. Uh, Austin Reed, from everything that I have read, says that he is going to play. Uh, here's, here's the issue to me. I think that the Western Kentucky, whatever offensive line they put out there, is going to be fine. I think they're going to be fine. Uh, they're number 31 in Havoc rate allowed. They haven't been able to run the ball this year, but they don't run it very often, uh, less than 45% of the time. Um, I look at it like this. Which team has the better quarterback? Uh, that's going to be Western Kentucky. Uh, which team has the better defense? I mean, that's going to be Old Dominion, but is it that much better? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, it's a it's a little. I'm going to trust my gut on this one, and the numbers say that I should do this too. Obviously, these numbers do not account for offensive linemen being out, etc. Uh, but I'm going to take, I'm going to take Western Kentucky here minus the two and a half, or excuse me, plus the two and a half. Uh, I think there is a a pretty good shot that these guys win a game just being explosive. Uh, Old Dominion had to fight back against Georgia State to win that last game of the year. I know they're excited about being in the bowl game, but I I think 
that Western Kentucky is the better offensive team. I think they're going to be able to put up points regardless of having multiple linemen down. Uh, I'm going to side with Western Kentucky plus the two and a half here. And so that is that's the way I will lean there. All right, next one up. The Frisco Bowl. This one's Tuesday, December 19th at 8 p.m. Central on ESPN, and it is UTSA, a 12.5 point favorite over Marshall in Old Frisco, Texas. Total of 53 on the ball game. And we'll pull up the numbers here. Full season numbers has UTSA favored by 11. Uh, this spread, by the way, jumped from 9 up to uh, 12.5, 13 at some places. Now, I bet this thing when it was at 9. But you see the full season numbers there. Um, UTSA is just better at pretty much everything. Uh, The Marshall defensive numbers for the full season look great. Uh, But when you look over the last six weeks, we'll pull it up here. Over the last six weeks, uh, not been great. They're they're pretty good against the run, but who they are they are not good against the pass, and even against the run. Uh, they still give up big time rush, uh, rushing explosiveness numbers. So something to pay attention to there. Um, they're number eighty four in rushing explosiveness, and UTSA is number three in rushing explosiveness. Uh, UTSA, I think, is going to be able to throw the ball on these guys pretty easily. Uh, on the other side, I mean, Marshall is, yeah, maybe they can run a little bit but I don't think they're going to be able to much against this defense. And the only guy that's sitting out for UTSA is, and and here's the deal, Marshall uh, Rashid Ali, there's a chance that he is not going to play in this game. He might, he might choose to sit out. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that uh, because he's going to be an NFL guy. I, I think UTSA is just way, way, way better all around. Like this is a significantly better team. You look at net points per drive, Marshall number 117, UTSA number 17. That's a 100-spot difference. You look at net explosiveness, UTSA is number 33. Marshall is number 127. I mean, it's just, it's night and day difference. Marshall is uh, is not a very good team. Their quarterback is transferring out. The guy that's going to play is Cole Pennington. Yes, Chad Pennington's son. Uh, and Cole Pennington on the year has zero touchdowns and six interceptions. That's not great. That's not great. So if you're giving UTSA short fields, that's that's certainly not going to work in your favor. Uh, I'll take UTSA minus 12 and a half on this one. Uh, that's the number I found, I believe, over at BetMGM. There's a couple. You, you can go and look at multiple spots for that. Find your number. Shop around. Uh, but I got 12 and a half here, so that's what I'm going to be doing. All right, we got two more games. Let's go on and get to it. The Boca Raton Bowl, this one's on Thursday, December 21st, 7 p.m. Central Time, and that would be USF, the South Florida Bulls, taking on the Syracuse Orange. Syracuse, a three-point favorite with a total of 61 on this one right now. Let's look at the numbers. So far on the season, uh, my power rating would have Syracuse minus 13. My projected spread would have Syracuse minus 6. And for the last six weeks... It would have Syracuse minus 1.57. USF is going to be really, really excited to be in this game. And it is down in Boca, so not too terribly far from Tampa. Um, It's a lot closer than Syracuse. I know that. Syracuse had their coach fired. Uh, Nunzio Campanelli is going to be the interim. They've got some dudes that are going to be out for this. USF, I don't believe, has any that are going to be out. Uh, The pace of play difference is massive. USF runs, on average, more than 14 plays more per game than Syracuse does. However, Syracuse likes to run the ball, and they run it over 70% of the time in the last six weeks. That's going up against the teeth of, of the South Florida defense. That's what South Florida does. They're number 40 in PPA per rush allowed. Uh, USF is not good stopping the pass, but Syracuse doesn't pass the ball. They throw it like 26% of the time. And then the number 115 
in passing success rate. Like that, Syracuse is not going to try and take advantage through the air. On the other side, USF, number 11 in PPA per pass, even though they're number 102 in passing success rate, they are number 13 in passing explosiveness. Syracuse's defense is number 58 in that spot. So, um, look, the only way that I could bet this game is by taking South Florida. They are the significantly more motivated team here. Uh, I like Byron Brown. I like what he's doing at quarterback. I like Alex Golesh, the offense that he runs. I have no idea what this Syracuse team is going to look like right now. I, I mean, you tell me in the comments if you do. But my guess is that Garrett Schrader is going to keep doing what he's doing, and that's running the ball and whatnot, and we'll just see who it is that actually lines up for Syracuse. Uh, I think USF wants it more. I'll take USF plus the three in this spot. This is a big ball game for them. All right, last one. The Gasparilla Bowl. I know you guys are excited about that. Gasparilla. Uh, Georgia Tech against UCF. This one's on Friday, December 22nd, 5.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. And UCF is a four-and-a-half point favorite with a total of 64 on this one. And let's see what we got numbers-wise. Doesn't look like we're going to see a lot of opt-outs in this game, which is awesome. I love that. Full season numbers, I would have UCF favored by eh, 13 and a half. My power rating has uh, UCF by a little more than 12 and a half. Um, the spread when this was created, UCF minus five and a half, and it's all the way down to four and a half at certain spots. So um, th these two teams when you just look at offense, defense, kind of mirror images of each other, right? Um, both teams are really good in offensive success rate. Both really bad in defensive. So, let's take a look at the last six weeks, and my numbers would have UCF favored by 12 over the last six weeks. And again, you see number 28 offensive success rate for UCF, Against number the uh, against the number one twenty seven defensive success rate for Georgia Tech, uh, Georgia Tech number twenty offensive success rate against UCF number one eleven defensive success rate. Uh, both of these teams good at running the ball. Georgia Tech number eight PPA per rush. Uh, UCF's defense number ninety eight. That's not good. On the other side, UCF number nine in PPA per rush, and Georgia Tech's defense is number one nineteen in PPA allowed per rush. Uh, I look at the overall numbers and stats wise. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I think Parker told me not to overthink this. UCF is the better overall team. They are more explosive on offense. They are better at stopping explosive plays on defense. Uh. I'm going to ride with UCF, minus the four and a half. Now, Gus Malzahn, not great in these spots. Two and five against the spread as a bowl favorite. Um, but, man, I look at this, and that UCF is just the better team. Which is weird to say. Um, I don't know why that's weird. Regardless, that was a, that was a moment of uh, exis uh, existential crisis. Deep thinking on that UCF game. So, give me UCF, minus the four and a half. What a day. All right, I'm going to go get back in the bed. You guys have been fantastic. I appreciate you for being here. Of course, check out the BetUS College Football Show. Uh, we'll be back again next week uh, with like 17 or 18 bowl games uh, to get you through uh, all Christmas and all that kind of mess uh, before we're back on the Thursday uh, before New Year's. So, hopefully, I can get you guys taken care of give you my thoughts on these games, what the stats say, all that kind of mess. Uh, it's a mess. It's a disaster with all the opt-outs and coaches moving and all that kind of stuff. I think Brett McMurphy said that there were only 13 games where the head coach or the coordinators or the quarterback had not left or opted out. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right. Uh, let's get out of here. You guys have been fantastic. Check out Ticket Smarter. Check out the Bet US College Football Show. Uh, support the show. Follow me on all the socials. You guys know what to do. 
You guys know what to do. You're the best. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football. And, uh, and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.